Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you will receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question for Bill, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, bullingtoncapital.com. So without any additional delay, here's the host of today's program, Bill Bullington. Well, welcome back. It's been an interesting, if not short week. And uh, wow, the volume really kind of dried up <laughs> on the stock market. I wouldn't wait. Oh, uh, wouldn't wait. I wouldn't weigh the events um, and give them much um credence as to what direction the market may be going over the next couple of weeks because right now it's pretty much like mostly sideways it's a little bit up but um anyway uh certain stocks are are moving but none of them are moving incredibly fast so time to relax i guess take a couple weeks off if you want to typically in the summertime uh, stock markets don't really do too much from uh oh starting in june it slows down it gets down to a crawl in august which is very uh, tricky for average investors because when most portfolio managers are taking some sort of a, a vacation or, or business is really slow like it happens to be in the summer, it doesn't take a lot of volume one way or the other to move the market up or down a couple percentage points. So don't get fooled by that. Uh, if somebody wants the market to go down, you know, get a big hedge fund out there that wants to make some profits on short sales or they, they bought put options or whatever it is, they can uh, come in 15 minutes before the close, put a great big sell order in, send the market down a couple percent and profit on that. So if you're a longer term investor, just ignore that. Yeah, that's <laughs> Actually, most investors should just ignore that and unless you're that type of trader, which you, know, you have to have lightning sp uh, speed, you have to have fiber optic networks that are connected right to the exchanges. That, that, that's not something that the average person can compete on, nor should they, and the big companies that are doing that are not making much money anyway. So, yeah, they just make it uncomfortable <laughs> for a lot of the others. And before I go on, uh, we're going to be talking today about um, getting organized you know, with your investments, getting organized, but also um, the rest of your life. Organization is a key, and it doesn't have to be hard. That's one of the things I re the message I'd really like to get out there over the next couple of years. Organization, financial organization, does not have to be difficult. There are two types, two two major schools of thought in that. We'll talk a little bit about those later in today's program. But one of them is very difficult, and one of them is much simpler. People generally have a uh, personality type of of one or the other, and if you've got the type of personality, uh, let me back just back up a minute and say that we'll cover both of them and uh, I'll tell you which one I am at the end of the show and you can feel free to call in and ask any questions if you have during the meantime 216-901-0945 216-901-0945 and since I said that uh, okay we'll also be talking about not only but getting organized but living beneath your means which is kind of a key to being able to accumulate money how do you do that I've got a couple of ideas for you there the uh, uh, and then also, how do you take money out during retirement? What do you do when you're getting close to retirement age? How do you how should you be taking the money out of you, the investments that you saved for this time in your life? So those are the three things we'll talk about today. And anything else that you would like to talk about, you can call us 216-901-0945, 216-901-0945. And I've got to go to my uh, uh, website. And I forgot to pull that up ahead of time, so bear with me a minute. The because uh, we have a seminar coming up, and it's on the twenty second. It is a Saturday morning. Um, it's going to be at eight thirty, and we're going to talk about some of the tools that we're using to help people get organized. That I I think they're great. You know, we're providing these. Uh, we're going through our database and our training on it right now. By the time the workshop gets here, we'll be ready to start rolling this out on a, a much larger scale. 
And I think this is a great tool for, for just about anybody who's interested in kind of getting a grip on their, their life financially. It doesn't have to be hard. That's what I want to emphasize. It does not have to be hard. You can make it easy on yourself. So actually, let me type my name. And I just, I typed in, I go to um, Google, type in Bullington Capital. I come right up. You can click right on the seminar tab. And there we go. Yep, July 22nd, 830 Corporate College, East Side. There are 66 seats remaining. There's no cost to attend. And we're going to show you this stuff. Uh, we're going to show you what we've been doing to comply with the Department of Labor's uh, new rules that have come out. And I think it's actually, you know, it's really funny is I think it's one of the few times the government's ever passed a rule that's actually going to help everybody. <laughs> It'll help the individual investors and it's going to help investment advisors. Uh, it, it's supposed to make it. And by the way, they're already debating again. I thought that it had passed and they're going to implement it. Evidently, that was wrong. Um, they're still looking at modifying some of the rule. That that has been driving me crazy. The Because uh, you get so many opinions from all these law firms who are selling consulting services, obviously, the uh, um, on what the rule is going to entail. And they've been changing it constantly. At this point, I don't think it matters if they change because I've, I've taken the draft that I've seen that's the most comprehensive, the most complex. And that's how I'm, that's what I'm assuming is going to happen. So if they cut off a little bit of it here and there, I'll still be good. <laughs> so that, that's how I like to operate. I like to try to cover all the bases if, if I can, which is the, uh, another topic that we wanted to talk about a little bit today. Covering all the bases, you know, with investments, it's very difficult for most people. Most people turn on and look at whatever's done the best over the past you know, 12 months, past six months. So why don't I get that? Well, because you didn't have all your money in that one category. And that's not prudent to do that. And to do that risks uh, overweighting something right before it crashes. You, know, you have to be able to predict in advance that that's going to happen. And you have to predict when it's going to end. And then you've got to predict the next one that outperforms. And then you have to predict when that one's going to end. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons that uh, the average investors would be so much better off in just a regular balanced fund or a balanced account, stocks, bonds, and cash. And uh, again, we'll be talking about that at the workshop too, because that's part of that financial dashboard that we're talking about to get organized so you can pull everything in one place. It'll show you how your assets are allocated. It'll show you the breakdown between stocks, bonds, and cash. And when you hear the, the phrase asset allocation, that's actually what they're talking about. In English, it means what percentage of your assets do you have invested in stocks, bonds, and cash? That's what it means in English. <laughs> Sorry to take that tone. I, I promised myself I was never going to do that again, but the, uh, and I'm going to try not to. So, and, and the ratio between uh, fixed income or bonds, um, that would be anything like a CD, the government bonds, uh, stuff that's actually safer, but it's got a lower return. When I say safer, I, what I really mean is it's not quite as volatile. It doesn't fluctuate like stocks do. And you need some of that in there, depending on how risky or how risk averse you are. What's your investment personality? That's got to be judged too. And if you've got some of that in there, and it's a great thing, if you've got, uh, if it's matched up to your personality, that, that's tough, by the way. As I've been getting calls this, this oh, oh, just the past few weeks, investors that are relatively new to my firm. Hey, how come, uh, you know, how come the market's up 8% and we're not? Well, it's because you have bonds. <laughs> because you didn't want to risk being down 50%. And see, when you're in stocks, stock market, what most people refer to as stock market anyway, the S&P 500 was down 50%. The Russell 2000, which is small cap stocks, was down more than 50%. Emerging markets were down close to 70%. Yeah, so if you want to get those the returns that they're going to produce on the upside, by the way, they're only up about 8% this year. So an 8% gain, you're going to risk 
you know, a, a big drop like that. Now that's being facetious because you know I know you're not supposed to look at a six month or a one year or even a two or a three year time period. You really need to look out a lot farther than that, even if you're in your 90s. Even if you're in your 90s, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, then we might have to do that on a different show, actually, because uh, each break, what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to take these topics, lay out what we're talking about on the first section of the show, so you have an idea what's coming up. We're going to go into more detail into it during the second part of the show, the second segment. And then the third part of the show, we're going to review that. Sounds a lot like high school, doesn't it? <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Because one of my goals is, is really to try to help people. I really want to help people understand because they need to understand if they're going to do well. And uh, I know it's frustrating. I, I know it's discouraging when you're watching CNBC or you're trying to pick up a Wall Street Journal and you don't understand what's in there because there's a lot of language. And incidentally, a lot of the people that are uh, writing and reading that stuff to a camera someplace don't understand it either. So don't feel too bad. They like to pretend they're, they're very good actors. But a lot of them really don't understand it. It's okay. That, that's actually what creates a job for me. I'll be, I'll be the translator. I got nothing to lose, nothing to gain by translating. Actually, I do have things to gain. Uh, confidence by my clients. So that's a big benefit. Why do things work the way they do? The, uh, it's very complex. Can be very complex. But uh, there are some very simple solutions. And you hang around and listen to this show long enough, you'll hear me get to all of them at some point in time. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to come back from a commercial break a few minutes from now. We're going to review just quickly getting organized. Uh, and part of getting organized, the reason that you need to get organized is because it's really hard to hit a target that you can't see. And if you can't, if you're not organized, you can't see. Yeah. It's like having a plan or a map. How do I get to where I want to go? Uh, well, where do you want to go? I don't know. All right, well, you got to decide that first. <laughs> Once you decide that, then you're going to develop a plan. Uh, and uh, that, that's a pretty easy thing to do if you decide where you want to go. But you got to do that part. Got to decide where you want to go. Um, I'll give you some guidelines, and you'll be hearing this on future shows and probably forever now because it's a, uh, I'm just going to make it a part of my program. I hear it, and I think, you know, this is really funny. I've been doing this for so long. I just automatically assume at some point in time that people that talk to me understand and have heard this before, and that's wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I was absolutely wrong. The, uh, a lot of people are coming in new. They've never heard it before, and we are trying to put uh, material out. Uh, that's one of the reasons I do the show and the seminars because this stuff is very important. It's very important. It's kind of like uh, driver's ed, you know, and realistically, you could get all this done in about 50 hours. I think that's the same amount of time they make you practice driving, but they make you practice driving, by the way, after you've taken the test saying that you know how to drive <laughs> and uh, that, you know, that's kind of important to take that same approach to your financial life because it's, it's really important and, uh, and I hear people talking to me, they, they come right out and say it. Well, you just think about money all the time. Well, no, no, I talk about money because that's, that's what I do. Okay. That, that's my living. And one of the reasons that I talk about it so much is that so few people understand how complex uh, their financial lives can be. And they get frustrated and give up and don't think about it at all. And that's a problem. I can tell you, you're going to have problems your entire life unless you get your arms around your finances. And that's why we're doing that seminar. It's why we're bringing out these tools to our clients. We, we want to help. I'm not here to make you do anything, by the way. I, I, you can't do that. The, uh, but we are here to be available as a resource to those people that want the help. And uh, I take that stuff very seriously. It's uh, because so many bad things happen when finances break down. It's just a, a nature of the beast and that's the way it is. So, uh, anyway, you can go to my website, bullingtoncapital.com. If you want to learn more about us, sign up for the, uh, uh seminar on the, uh, website there. 
our radio shows are there. Um, we've got a couple of older videos up there. I haven't written anything or posted anything for a while. That, that's going to change this fall. We're uh, actually doing some changes in Bullington Capital internally. Um, not only are we bringing out these new tools, but we're going through and uh, uh, the way that we manage money is changing slightly, ever so slightly. But it's going to it's going to free up a lot of time, and I'm going to have a lot more talk uh, topics to talk about. And you know, I'd really appreciate if you're out there listening that uh, shoot me an email, send me things that you want to hear about because I'll definitely try to include them. So just send me an email, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, what kind of questions you might have, what's on your mind. Um, our practice, by the way, we typically focus on retirement planning. When you're 30 years old is the best time to, actually, you know what's the best time to re- plan for retirement? When you're 12. That's the best time. You know why? Most kids' hormones haven't kicked in yet. <laughs> and you can still talk to them. <laughs> They're still listening at that age. The... Um, Boy, you wait until they're a teenager and you're not going to be able to talk to them until they're in their mid to late 30s, <laughs> if that. <laughs> but uh, not everybody. But you need to get to them young because it's a major task. Planning to be and not even successful financially, but planning so that you're not a burden on someone else or to yourself. You know, it's, It takes a lot. It really takes a lot. And I think they should teach this to 12-year-olds because, by the way, that's when Warren Buffett got his first paper out and started figured out that he could actually make more money by taking more paper routes and then hiring other kids to deliver the papers for him, and he handled the, the collections. <laughs> yeah, so he got it really early. <laughs> and uh, it it's not that complicated, and by the time somebody is 12 years old, they have learned all the math that's required to be successful financially because you don't need to know calculus or trig or anything like that to be successful financially. What you do have to have is a really good basic understanding of simple math, um, primarily percentages and how those percentages work. Uh, If you have a really good understanding of that and you apply it well, well, guess what? You can do it. You can be incredibly successful and it'll take so much stress out of your life, when you finally get to that point where you're like, oh, oh, okay, now I see. The uh, Think about that for a second. Actually think about that while you listen to these commercials. <laughs> I'll be right back. You're listening to Bill Billington on 1420. Stay tuned. We're back. Hey, if you'd like to call 216-901-0945, my name is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon, 1420. Uh, You can also pick us up on iTunes or my website, bill at bullingtoncapital.com. The radio show is hosted there as a podcast as well as on uh, iTunes. So if you hear something that you are interested in, feel free to reach out on the Internet uh, through my website. Uh, There's a contact us form, or you can just email me, bill at bullingtoncapital.com. I appreciate that. If you want to sign up for that workshop coming up, that's a Saturday morning. It's going to be fun. We're talking about a uh, financial dashboard where you can see all your stuff in one place to help you get organized because it's uh, one of the most important things you can do financially you know, to help yourself is staying organized. So we're going to try to help you make it easy on you. Uh, and we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, at that workshop how to time the market without timing the market. <laughs> I know that seems like uh, double talk, and it is, quite frankly, because, uh, but there's a significance to it. And the signif- significance is timing the market means trying to jump in when it's good and jump out when you think it's bad. Almost everybody that does that under, you know, ends up making little or no money, uh, and so don't try that. It, it's not a, that's not a healthy way to manage your money. It just isn't. You just have to accept that the market's going to be volatile and do all you can to minimize it and keep it within your own personal risk parameters. You know, how much risk are you willing to take? And then you got to try to figure out how to keep your portfolio within that uh, risk threshold. And, and I, I'll give you an example. Let, let's say 
I don't want to be down more than 30%. I could take a, I'm pretty aggressive, so I want to make a lot of money, but I still, I would get really bothered if I were down 30% or so. So 30% is my decline tolerance. That's it. Now what do I do? Well, easy math. Stocks have been down over 50% more than once in the last 15 years, actually twice. So if you use that as your benchmark, 30% is 50% of 60%, right? So if you're 60% invested in stocks and you had another episode like we had from 2007 to 2009, which by the way, generally doesn't happen all that often, but it does happen. So we have to plan for the worst, hope for the best. I don't want to be down more than 30%. Market was down 50% and 30% is 50% of 60%. So if I had 60% of my money in stock funds of some kind or another and 40% in short-term fixed income, and then we had another one of those big blowups, I'm probably going to be down somewhere around 30% or so, right where I thought I could be. Am I happy? Heck no. Not happy about that. But you're not ready to take the bridge either. <laughs> so uh, because you stayed within your guidelines. And that's as simple as that gets and as simple as it needs to be. Now, I will tell you that the, the Department of Labor rules have approved a bunch of questionnaires that are going to allow, allow people to take more risk than they're comfortable taking because I've seen them. In fact, I'm using one, but I'm having this conversation in addition to that. <laughs> so I just want you to know, you got to know because at some point in time, you're going to find out. And if you found out and then you found out that your advisor A didn't know or B just didn't tell you, then uh, you're going to be upset. And, and we try to uh, prepare people so that they don't get upset by those things, things that are kind of inevitable at some point in time. And uh, so anyway, by the way, if you have a phone call, question, or comment, you can call 216-901-0945, 216-901-0945. My name is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon. I have a website called Bullington Capital Management, uh, bullingtoncapital.com, actually. And you can go there and contact us if you hear something and you'd like to see uh some of it in writing, that's fine. I have a model that I put together to help comply with the Department of Labor. Feel free. Uh, we're sending it out uh, slowly to existing clients because it's not that big a deal to, that it has to be done overnight. Uh, and it's not like something's going to jump up and run away. So we've got some time to implement this stuff. But it's really interesting. I took all the major asset classes. And incidentally, I will be showing this again at the workshop on the 22nd. So if you want to see this there, uh, on a meet in person, you know, I'll be there Saturday, 22nd, I think it's eight 30 in the morning. It's a breakfast meeting. Uh, and I'm going to show this illustration. This is a model of, I took the, the best in each category, uh, the best, my definition of best incidentally is best risk adjusted returns. So for every amount of fluctuation you get, it had the highest return given that amount of fluctuation and lowest cost, uh, in track record assets under management and the, the category. So I've been sending it out a little bit at a time. Uh, I'll give everybody that wants a copy of it. Like I said, I, it's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be done. If you're a client, you're listening. Hey, how come I have it? We just haven't gotten there yet. It's not that significant that it's going to run up and, you know, run away with us. And the stuff that we're doing now is actually a little more conservative than that anyway. So um, I might be saving somebody some uh, anguish there a little bit. The uh, We'll see. The uh, In fact, actually, it's had a, a better risk-adjusted return than a lot of the models that I'm using right now. So it's going to replace a lot of things. And we'll be handing out a copy of that at that workshop. It, we took the best ETFs in each category, the large cap, uh, both value, large cap value and large cap growth. We took mid cap value, mid cap growth, small cap value, small cap growth. By the way, cap means capitalization. And basically they're talking about the size of the companies. So large cap is lar large companies, mid caps, medium sized companies, small caps, smaller size companies relative to the stocks in the stock market. These are all big companies, by the way, but, uh, Anyway, so then we go to emerging markets and international. And each of those categories needs to be represented. 
the international and emerging markets have not done nearly as well as ours has, uh, or the S&P 500 anyway, over the past five years. And I think that somewhere over the, actually they've started, they're outperforming this year. And no, those cycles normally last several years. And they've got a long way to go before their stocks are, before their stocks valuations are the equivalent of valuations in the United States. Because ours are ahead of theirs. There's, in other words, theirs are cheaper. For every dollars, every dollar that you're paying for a stock in those funds, the companies are ger- are generating a higher amount of income, a higher amount of profit per dollar. Now they, they may not pay that out as a dividend, but they are earning it, and that's uh, that's important. That's very important. In the long run, that's going to make a big difference. Over the next five years, I think it's going to make a really big difference. So I'll give everybody out an illustration. It's free. Just going to hand it out. This is the uh, Bullington Capital Department of Labor model. That's what we're calling it, <laughs> the Department of Labor model. The uh, and like I said, I, I really you know I know it's luck on their parts, and that was something that we were th- working on anyway, because we had been watching international emerging markets languish, even though their companies are growing faster. You know, people get afraid by uh, emerging markets. Yeah, you know those. Small, tiny companies you probably don't know of, like Samsung <laughs> or uh, LG. Yeah, there's a huge companies uh, overseas and growing faster, selling at cheaper valuations. That's sooner or later that will kick back in. And it looks like it, it may have already started. So, uh, again, feel free to go to the website, sign up. You'll get that stuff to take home with you. Um, it's, we'll talk about it in detail. And we had just started this 15-minute uh, segment by talking about you know, timing the market without timing the market. And, and here's kind of how that works. And I'll ha- also have an illustration of that uh, at the workshop. There's a graphic that goes along with what I'm telling you on the radio right now. And uh, you want to get one, you'll have to show up because I'm not allowed to mail them out to the, the public in mass. My uh, licensing agreement doesn't allow for that. So anyway... If you want to be able to time the market without timing the market, you know what you do? You put money in each of the categories and then you rebalance your portfolio. Put money in each of the categories and then rebalance the portfolio. So you're going to have some emerging market almost all times. You're going to have some international almost all times. You're going to have small, medium, large company stocks in the United States almost all times reason I'm saying almost is occasionally, like right now, large cap growth in the United States, which has done really, really well past 12 months, probably a little overpriced. And I'll show you what I mean by that at the workshop. So slight changes, but you want to have those categories represented because one of them is going to be the top category over the next year. One of them is going to be the second performing category over the next year. One of them is going to be the third best performing category over the next year. And you will own all three of them. Now, you will also own the ones at the bottom. But by taking an average of them, generally you get a smoother return. And in the, long, in the super long run, all of their average returns are fairly similar. <laughs> so think about that. If all the returns are fairly similar, but they're not distributed equally, meaning one year one may be the leader and the next year that's going to change, which almost always happens, by the way. The, uh, what's the logical thing to do to try to catch, to try to maximize your value? It's actually to try to have some money in each one of them. That's the logical thing to do. So I've got a nice illustration of how that works. That's actually one of the uh, tenets I built the Department of Labor model on that we're also going to be giving away at the uh, workshop. This one's going to cost me a lot of money. All that paper, you should you should see what we have to print whenever we uh, give something like this away. After this seminar, I'll actually make that package available to anybody that wants to call in uh, and request it. So, But I have to wait until uh, after the seminar. And in fact... Some of the material I already know is there. I haven't updated it yet, so it will change just a little bit by the time we get to the seminar. And anyway, if you have a phone call question or comment, you can always call us 216-901-0945, 216-901-0945. And uh, see, I want to make sure I got to everything that I I wanted to talk about this morning, and I think I did. Uh, So I might go back and review 
Uh, and then the, over the next 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about Look Out for the Bull. Um, we actually had to take the website down, I'm sorry to say. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the last segment. At some point in time, I can't tell you when, because the Department of Labor, with all the regulations and all the extra work that we've had to do uh, to prepare, has left very little time for activities like that uh, for the, uh, the website. And again, I'm sorry for the people that have uh, subscribed to that that won't be there, uh, but we are going to, at some point in time, put out a little course so that you can set it up and follow this on your own. And uh, it's not that hard to do, by the way especially with a video showing you step-by-step step how to set it up. So we did uh, also refund uh, the latest month. The, uh, so you got the whole month for free. And uh, we'll talk about uh, that course. I'll keep you updated on that over the, the course of the next few months. I can't promise when it might be, so don't hold your breath, because uh, we are up to our eyeballs <laughs> and alligators the, uh, with uh, regulations and a lot of the stuff that's going on. The website that uh, we're setting up for, for clients, that's, uh, we've just just begun to roll that out. Um, I would do it all at once, and man, we might, be, uh, uh, but that's really hard, by the way. It's, you know, we service about 175 households, uh, so if I do 175 at once, you know, everybody in my office hates me <laughs> because of all the phone calls that are coming in, uh, but... Uh, now, actually, about a third of them would actually respond right away. So thinking of it in those terms, which I didn't think of before until just right now on the radio, uh, uh, televised, or not televised, a broadcast epiphany, but only about a third of the people will even open the email anyways. <laughs> so we should probably go ahead and send that out. The uh, uh, You'll really like it. You'll really like it. Uh, it's a for personal financial portal. You can see everything in one spot. Uh, you can track your credit cards, your, your airline mileage. You can see what your house is worth up there. You put it there. You can put up all your important contacts. You can put up uh, any important documents that you want. You'll be able to screen, uh, scan them and upload them. And if you don't know how to do that, we can do that for you. Um, you can control who accesses it and how they access it. It does have extremely high levels of security on it. Second factor authentication. It's encrypted. It's a, a super high um, security levels and really just lets you keep your finger on, fingers on the pulse. You know, I've gotten so used to it at this point. It, uh, I can't imagine going back without it now. That is uh, kind of crazy because I've never really been that way. I've been you know, once a month maybe download everything into a spreadsheet, separate it out, say, oh, okay, that, yeah, that was last month and I need to cut back here. <laughs> or I need to add over there. And uh, that's how I was doing it. Now, you know, it's more like once a week, I go in, flip it on, and it's all done for me. You know, oh, that is really cool. Hey, you know what? I got a call here. And uh, if you'd like to call 216-901-0945, and I believe this is my uh, old buddy Tom. Tom, how you doing? Bill, great show. How are you? Good. Yeah. Uh, glad you called. I guess you guys yes, could. Yes, sir. Uh... I was uh, just driving, and I had it on the radio, and I thought uh, I'd like to just chime in with your listeners. Um, we've been a family business since 1920, and right now we're in the process of having our summer clearance sale. So it's a great time to come in uh, to State Road on the exit uh, 16, I-480 State Road. Uh, everything is marked down, reduced dramatic pricing. And we're also uh, having a promotion for one week from Smith Brothers, who you're familiar with. That's yeah. our Amish sofa line, right. which is... Uh, State of the art. I mean, they're the only company uh, that will give you a lifetime warranty on the frame of the furniture. The spring unit of the furniture is Coral Springs, and also the cushion course, which everyone has one year, they're a lifetime. So just think of that. Your sofa's eight, nine, ten years old. The cushions flatten out like a pancake. We send them back to the factory, and it's brand new foam. It's unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That is really so cool. Nobody does that. But uh, I was in my warehouse this morning, and uh, not to knock other dealers, but I have two professional preparation men that do uh, refinishing, upholstery work. We detail every single piece of furniture prior to loading, like it's going into my home that's going to be in perfect condition. Yesterday I was on a, a decorating call, and I won't name the competitor, but there was a, a truck one door away from the home, and everything in the truck was in boxes. They're pulling things out. They're assembling chairs. They're opening tables. Wow. And I said myself, 
this is ridiculous. We we level every chair. We touch up every table. What do they do in the rain? What do they do in the snow? <laughs> and, then, and then inside the truck was a solid box. I mean, it's a different industry than it was years ago. There's, yeah. there's a difficulty with packaging and, and some items that aren't finished how they should be and what have you. So uh, the, the furniture industry is now the service industry. We really have to service everything yep. before it even you know, leaves our warehouse. Absolutely. The uh, Well, I'm glad you called in. Hey, do you want to hang on while we take this commercial break? Sure, great. Let's okay. hang on. All right, thanks. Listen to Bill, <clears throat> excuse me, Bill Bullington right here on 1420. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back. Hey, Tom, you still there? Yeah, I thought it was ironic. You you went on a commercial break, and I was the first commercial. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yep, that came up. No, I just wanted to tell the listeners about our uh, summer promotion. It's uh, uh, running all of uh, this month and, and first week of August, but our Amish sale is running. Actually, it started uh, Wednesday, and it goes till next Saturday. So it's a great opportunity if you're looking for high-quality sofas, love seats, chairs, recliners. But uh, if anyone hasn't been to our location, we are one full city block on 5295 State Road. It was originally a, uh, a furniture store, and then next to us uh, in the 80s, there was a party center and a, a laundromat and an insurance agency that decided to sell that building, and we basically cut a wall through. So we're like 35,000 square feet uh, you know, from block to block. And uh, that building uh, is from 1957, so this is actually... Uh, our 60th year in Parma, wow. 97th year overall business, because it originally started on Clark Avenue. So it's just been Clark Avenue, then West 25th Street, then the Parma. So so uh, easy location. People say that all the time. Well, we see your billboard. We live in Shaker Heights, but every time we go to the airport, when we drive home, we see your ad you know, flashing. Yeah, so, so, that, uh, that's it, really it, cool. Before he's a, a godsend, I was in Pittsburgh last week, and they don't have the same luxury we do with the freeway system. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that, that that's a tough city. And you know what? The uh, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I used to shop at your place probably 10 years before I met you or knew who you were. And uh, right. I, I was in there all the time. And I can tell you, I used to go to all the, the, the local uh, furniture shops, and you guys were by far offered the best value of, of any of them. Yes. So. I mean, people, you know, I hate to say this, but I'll go to a party and people say, oh, I'm not sure, you know, if we could afford your price range. First of all, we carry everything. And second of all, we discount heavily. So yes. so uh, the people, when you walk in, they're shocked. They're like, oh, my, that's all this is? I'd love to hear that. Yeah, good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's but, but uh, uh, yeah, we're very particular on the, what manufacturers we carry. And uh, believe me, I do all the uh, uh, servicing. And so if there's any issues whatsoever, uh, you know, the company's gone. I'll, right. I'll go with another vendor. So uh, yeah. And we have loyalty with our manufacturers. And then we also have protection. Like, for example, Smith Brothers, there's uh, three dealers in Northeast Ohio that have it. So it's not like everyone has this. Right. And I can mention this about other companies, too, Thomas, so Bernhardt, other manufacturers. So so they look at the store for, number one, the operation, and number two, uh, how is everything prepared in uh, preparation, and, and uh, if there's any issues, how is everything handled? And, and that's our forte. I mean, we, we really uh, stand behind our product, number one. We go above and beyond the manufacturer's warranty. And number three, like I said before, we deliver this as if it's going into my own home. Right. You know, everything is yep. fully detailed. I have two men, uh, you know, for example, your, your sectional that you got. Oh, man. <laughs> you should have seen that. We'll spend 30 minutes on it. You may not realize this before, but if, if there's a question that is under stuff or if we have to steam it okay. back or uh, if, if there's a brush mark that needs, you know, adjusting. So uh, uh, it's important. It's very important. And like again, I'm not knocking other dealers that uh, you may see on your street uh, right. um, opening right from box, but unfortunately, it's it's not shoes. It doesn't work right. that way anymore. There's, there's, there's yeah. uh, uh, I'm I'm taking the quality level from the product out of the box from an eight to ten. I mean, yep. I'm making it perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey Tom, thanks. I'm but gonna. Bill, uh, sh- great, great show as always, and 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 I appreciate the friendship. And if anyone hasn't been in, or if you're looking for anything, please stop by. Now's the time. So Sounds... Have a great day, Bill. Okay, you Take too. Care. Yep. Boy, and I'm gonna go right to Carl. Carl, you have a question for us? Yeah. Good morning. Hey. I wanted to talk to you about the river. I keep on hearing that you know, the river is overhanging on the market. There. You're um man, oh, you are really breaking up on me. The uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, your phone keeps going in and out. I I didn't get. How's the sound now? 
a little better. Okay. Well, anyway, derivatives and the danger of derivatives to the overall stock market. Um, well, they're, yeah, they, they're always there. Uh, nobody really knows because a lot of them don't have – the reporting is not um, as transparent as trading on, a, like, the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, so, And big hedge funds don't have to disclose their positions very frequently. So they really mm-hmm. get – they really just have to guesstimate what they think is happening. And, and by the way, derivative is a term that is uh, – can mean a, a ton of different things. A, a, a mortgage-backed security that you buy from Ginnie Mae, which is an obligation of a unit of the federal government, is considered a derivative. So it's got a government guarantee, and it's just a, they're just plain old mortgage-backed securities. They've got mortgages in them, seasoned mortgages in a lot of cases, uh, and that's also known as a derivative. So... When people are talking about derivatives, they're typically talking about like the, the super high risk ones, and those would be futures contracts and uh, options contracts that they're selling, not that they own. Um, but uh, those levels are constantly changing, and there are at least six thousand institutions with at least a couple billion dollars in them, and those guys can be holding and changing and trading derivatives, and they do, uh, a lot of them do, every day. So that's just stuff that they use to fill newspapers, in my opinion, because by the time you've actually gathered all the information, it's changed already. Mm -hmm. So they're just guesstimating. (laughs) They are derivatives, essentially just bets. Yep. On the direction of uh, pricing and securities yeah. in the market. Well, that's one type of derivative, yeah. That's a type of derivative, and that's typically the kind that they're talking about. Uh, and they really don't know. I mean, I'm telling you, they, they just don't know. It's like the unemployment numbers. You know, those are mm-hmm. those are guesstimates. And uh, do they help? Probably not that much. Has anybody ever been able to make money off of their uh, reports? Nope. <laughs> 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 so, I, I don't know. I would take it with a grain of salt. I, I would, really wouldn't worry about it. Where you really need to get worried is when worried. If you look at the price to sales ratio of the S and P five hundred, and it's over three, okay, then you that's a like almost bubble territory. But the mm-hmm. uh, or at least you're starting on bubble territory, and right now it's just a little over two. Mm-hmm. So it'd have to go up another fifty percent to get to three. So I, I don't think there's a lot to worry about. Um, you know. At least nothing that's extremely obvious. So, right. but my only concern is in this market that's been going gangbusters for you know how many years now? Eight plus years. Well, actually, yeah. it's not the whole market though. If you take and this is one of the things that's bothering me, um, the market cap weighting, the top ten percent of the stocks have have accumulated a large and substantial portion of all the gains, and a lot of stocks have not participated at all. So mm-hmm. if the money, and this would be the dream scenario, the money slowly comes out of those stocks that are slightly overpriced now, that are real popular, that have been going up, and moves into some of the areas where they're not uh, nearly as overvalued, and, and quite frankly, a lot of them are undervalued. That's what you would hope would happen, and it's got a good. there's a good chance that that does happen. Now, the other way is kind of like the, that's pulling the Band-Aid off slowly, <laughs> <laughs> because those stocks would have to go sideways then while the other stocks actually caught up. The other stock is to rip the Band-Aid off really quickly, and that would be have the S&P 500 drop 10 or 15% you know, in, in a couple weeks, and, uh, and then it would be right back to where it should be, and it'll start that process all over again. Uh, but right. uh, that, that's not the, uh, I'm hoping that that's not the way it works out. <laughs> but even if it does, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So we're in pretty good shape. I'll, I'll let you know when we get really, uh, when it's really rough. And when you see the percentage of loans that banks are making, uh, mm-hmm. bad loans creep up uh, oh, 10 or 15%, that's a, a surefire warning shot. Okay. That hasn't happened yet. But. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. Well, one last thing, Billy. I'm just just a furniture. I've, I've been a customer of theirs in the past, and they are truly a first class outfit. Yeah, I yeah I know. Long- I was so oh, glad. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Thanks for saying that too, because I had got been going there forever uh, before I ever met any of those guys, and uh, I was really uh, really pleased to have met them. Uh, nice story. They work really hard, 
uh, that's an all-American story. You know, the father started selling appliances, actually, and then decided to, to switch and sell furniture. And uh, mm-hmm. it's been around forever. They just work really hard. They do a great job. And, uh, uh, yeah, well, thank, so thanks for that endorsement. That's yeah, I'd like to see Cheers. good people doing good things and being rewarded for it. That's awesome. Thanks again, Bill. Great show. Hey, thanks for calling. And uh, let's see, I've only got a couple more minutes here left. So if you want to email me, bill at bullingtoncapital.com, or just go to my website, Bullington Capital. If you want to sign up for that web, uh, website, you want to sign up for the workshop, feel free to do that. And since I only do have a few minutes, uh, the lookout for the bull site, some of the stocks that would have come up, I would tell you that uh, uh, Avis budget came up. It's got a low valuation. I don't know what the sales or profits look like because I haven't had time to look at it. But uh, it's come up off of a bottom, and it's got a really low valuation. And wow, stock's twenty-eight bucks. It was close to sixty about three years ago. So, having said that, that's my uh, tip for the week. Everybody have a good week, good investing, and good luck. You just caught another episode of the Bullington Capital Report, broadcasting every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and would like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or contact him through his website, BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk, and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC. The preceding program's views, claims, or representations may not reflect those of AM 1420 The Answer or Salem Media Group.